after Justin Bieber's week from hell in London, the pop superstar and his team were fielding all kinds of questions about why his second concert in Portugal this week was cancelled. Apparently logistical issues, not poor ticket sales, as has been reported elsewhere, led to the cancellation. According to the singer's camp, it was all due to union rules in Portugal. The problem was something called loadout, the time allowed for the crews to break down the stage, sets and equipment from Bieber's show and get set up for the next one. Bieber's manager, Scooter Brown, insisted both shows were completely sold out, a fact also confirmed by the local Lisbon promoters. That said, after Bieber's turbulent time in Britain last week, the pop superstar's team reportedly has told him to calm down, focus on his music and his concerts and get enough rest, hoping to prevent any future blow-ups like he had with a paparazzo in London or health. Scares, like his on-stage collapse and trip to the hospital. Apparently a weekend intervention of sorts took place via phone, Skype and emails from key members of Team Bieber, all orchestrated to help the singer move on from the bad week in London that generated so many negative headlines. For the record, Brown told E. at the SXSW Festival in Texas on Monday that there's nothing wrong with Bieber. He's in a great place. Tell everyone Justin is good, really good. On the mend. After collapsing on the set of her fashion police show on E, Carly Osborne reportedly is being tested for epilepsy as a possible cause of her seizure. The 28-year-old entertainer's publicist issued a statement Monday saying Osborne is still in the hospital under observation as a precautionary measure. She is in good spirits and looking forward to getting back to her busy schedule. TV talk, unlike the first time J.R. Ewing was shot, on the original Dallas series, fans of the new Dallas on TNT won't have to wait all summer to discover who shot the iconic TV character, played so memorably by the late Larry Hedman. Since the popular actor worked close to the end of his life, sadly ended by cancer in late November, the show's producers were able to use cinematic magic to realistically craft the segment in which JR took a pair of bullets. They promise the identity of J.R.S. Killer will be revealed in the season 2 finale in May. The laugh track, fans of Louis Black will want to know tickets go on sale at 9 a.m. next Monday for the comedian's May 10th show at the Rialto Square Theatre in Joliet. Making music. Clearly, becoming a dad to son Camden has inspired Nick Lachey's first ever lullaby album, A Father's Lullaby, available Wednesday for download on iTunes and Amazon.com, and rolling out to major retailers like Toys R Us, Target and Walmart in April. Congrats to veteran Chicago photographer and musician Dory Grayson and her band The Pond Hawks, still at number one on Music World Radio UK after five weeks, with their song Drive. The song is from the band's second album, Dreaming Over Ireland, and has received wide airplay on internet radio stations both here and abroad. Next up, the Pond Hawks will be headlining the international pop overthrow at the Red Line Tap, April 22nd. Therein go rock. Not surprisingly, Chief O'Neill's pub owners Simon and Brendan McKinney e are dancing the jig this week. Just in time for Street. Patrick's Day. Ireland of the Welcomes magazine has named Chief O'Neill S among the top 10 Irish pubs in the world the only selection in the Midwest based on a poll of its readers around the globe. Take about, long-time Chicago Academy of the Arts supporter and former board chairman Richard Turner will be honored May 14 with the Performing Arts School's Kutzenet Leadership Award, named for the late Sun Times columnist I.R.V. Kutzenet and his wife, Essie. The award will be presented at the Academy's Taste for the Arts Scala featuring the performance by CAA students and tastings by Eric Bayless and other top Chicago chefs. Makeup master, Michael Meyer, labeled the Chicago Wedding King because he's often called upon by brides to make them look great on their big day, has set up his eyebrow and makeup studio at the Nancy Anna Lair Salon on Rush Street. For nine years, Meyer's beauties also included shaping Oprah Winfrey's famous brows for her daily, top-rated talk show. Beasy on a bun, not to brag but I am happy my celebrity dog, which I concocted as America's Dog's Guest Chef of the Month, is selling well for the local chain of eateries. For those interested, here's the recipe, cuddling my love of Chicago-style dogs with my Austrian-slash-Germanic heritage, jumbo hot dog, topped with bacon-infused Dusseldorf dark mustard, sauerkraut, onions, sport peppers, pickled and crumbled bacon. I know.
It's a virtual heart attack on a bun, but mighty tasty. Scene on the scene. Among the weekend sightings that are PM Italian was Twilight Mega author Stephanie Meyer, joined by young actors Jay Cable and Max Irons. Yes, he's Jeremy Irons' son who starred in the film based on Meyer's SCIFI novel The Host, opening March 29th. Mr. Coburn Banks was spotted checking out the scene at Chef Fabio Viviani's New River North Siena Tavern. While in town to host screenings of his film Somebody Up There Likes Me, Nick Offerman Parks and Recreation stopped by A.J. Hudson's Public House. Music man Richard Marx's fans loved seeing him dining at Procino. Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle took a break to see one of the final performances of Porchlight Music Theater's production of Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill biographical show about Billie Holiday.